Next up, we have Paul McLean from Bearhead Energy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for the opportunity to present today. Bearhead Energy is developing the pre uh, premier multi-phase green hydrogen project with up to two gigawatts of installed electrolyzer capacity in Nova Scotia, with a targeted FID of 2025 uh, and a targeted uh, commercial operation date of uh, 2028. Uh, we feel that we've got a very attractive location. We're located in Nova Scotia with a world-class onshore and offshore wind resource. Uh, we're in close proximity to attractive markets in, uh, in Europe. And our project site is uh, 250 acres, which is fully owned and fully permitted. We received the last of our permits from uh, all levels of government uh, on April 12th of 2023. Uh, we have uh, secured the uh, land required. We've secured 70,000 acres of land for the development of up to one gigawatt of uh, onshore wind and solar. Uh, we have an MOU in place with the local water utility uh, for the supply of all of the, uh, the water feedstock that we require. Uh, and we also own um, attractive mineral expl exploration claims for uh, salt cavern uh, subsurface storage uh, in close proximity to the Bearhead site. Um, the basis of design currently, as I said, design is for two gigawatts of electrolysis, but we're carving that up into phases. So our initial phase, uh, phase 1A, is 400 megawatts of electrolysis powered by 500 megawatts of onshore wind uh, and 150 megawatts of uh, solar. Uh, phase 1B is an additional 400 megawatts of uh, electrolysis powered by an additional 500 megawatts of onshore wind. And then our phase two, uh, as Toby mentioned, it's an, an additional 1,200 uh, megawatts that uh, we've reserved for uh, future offshore wind development in Nova Scotia. In terms of the green ammonia production for the uh, phases, uh, phase 1A and B will produce about 360,000 tons of RFNBO compliant uh, green ammonia per year. And it, we are diligently progressing towards a final investment decision in 25 and a COD date of 2028. 20, uh, we're fortunate to have supportive ownership in place. Uh, Bearhead Energy, or the project, is a wholly owned subsidiary of uh, Buckeye uh, Partners and IFM, which is a, a, an Australian pension fund uh, that manages about $180 billion in assets. I think because I, I seem to be the person that attends all these conferences and, and presents that a lot of people think that uh, I'm the only person that works for, uh, for uh, Bearhead Energy, but uh, we have a very strong uh, ownership structure. As I said, we're owned by IFM Global Infrastructure. Uh, they, in turn, own 100% of uh, Buckeye Energy Holdings and a sister company called uh, uh, Base uh, Infrastructure. And I sold my company, uh, Bearhead Energy, to uh, Buckeye in, in 2022. They've been a fantastic financial sponsor and an excellent uh, partner in strategic development of the project. And we also own another sister company under that portfolio called Swift Current, uh, not Swift Current uh, Alberta. Uh, Swift Current is a renewable energy developer based out of uh, New England. Uh, and they've partnered with us on some of the onshore wind developments in uh, Nova Scotia. But I think what may set us apart from some of the other uh, energy, uh, clean energy projects in Atlantic Canada is that uh, through IFM, we also own European uh, storage and uh, 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 storage and uh, energy terminals in, in through uh, our 50% ownership in Impala. And uh, probably a name that's a little more recognized here in, in this region would be VTTI, uh, which has uh, uh, terminals in uh, 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 the Netherlands and in, uh, in Belgium. Uh, so I, I think it allows us to push a little bit further downstream than perhaps some of the other players in the, in the region. So we are, we're ideally positioned to meet uh, European Union demand. Uh, we're creating EU RFNBI NBO client, compliant renewable energy at scale, and we feel that we're ideally positioned to meet anticipated demand from Europe. Uh, of course, the, the, the backdrop is in May of 2022, the EU passed the Repower EU plan 
focus on diversifying the EU's energy supplies and accelerating the clean energy transition. The plan included a target to import 10 MTPA of uh, renewable energy, equivalent to 56 tons of ammonia by 2030. And the EU is looking to its trade trading partners, in particular Canada and the US, to supply compliant renewable hydrogen to meet these, these demands. The uh, project positioning at Atlantic Canada holds unique advantages, including, as, as Toby mentioned, high wind speeds, ample fresh water, strong federal tax incentives that are in place, uh, proximity to Europe, and a strong Canada-EU relationship. The project is located in an industrial com complex in Point Tupper, Nova, Nova Scotia, along the Strait of Canso, next door to my neighbor, Everwind. Uh, and the, uh, it's, the port is the northernmost ice-free deep water port in the world. Uh, only a few locations globally can produce and export uh, compliant renewable fuels at scale needed to meet stringent decarbonization targets. For the onshore uh, wind resource, the, the, this is sort of a summary of the, the project uh, phasing. As I said earlier, phase 1A will be 500 megawatts of onshore wind development via um, Webster's Corner, which is a, a combination of uh, crown lands or provincially owned lands and, and uh, private lands that we've secured. Um, in the uh, close to the Bearhead site, we're also developing 150 megawatts of, uh, of uh, solar. Uh, again, on lands that have been awarded by, by the Crown. Um, the uh, interconnection in, in the, this case with the wind farm will be uh, a connection to the Nova Scotia grid. Um, and uh, this will fuel 400 megawatts of installed electrolyzer capacity. Phase 1B is a little bit more complex. Um, again, 500 megawatts of onshore wind development. This one, though, will have to be directly connected to uh, Bearhead through a power transmission that we're working to uh, develop, bringing the electrons from the wind farm directly into the Bearhead terminal. Uh, and again, this, this wind farm will also power 400 megawatts of installed electro electrolyzer capacity. And then, of course, phase two to be powered by future offshore wind development and up to an additional 1.2 gigawatts of installed electrolyzer capacity. So we're we're sort of diligently executing on a very well-defined development plan. Uh, we've been uh, working this project uh, in its uh, green ammonia and green hydrogen uh, phase since April of uh, 2021. Um, so it's really exciting to see what's happening in Atlantic Canada since we established the, the project and, and to see all of the other projects that have, uh, that have come to bear in that uh, time frame. Of course, working in Canada, as, as with many other jurisdictions, having strong stakeholder engagement and support is very important. Um, and we work very hard in the local communities. Having social license is essential to pushing forward with one of these projects. Uh, we have very strong engagement with uh, and local support from many local state stakeholders, including First Nations, labor unions, local government, and the local community. Uh, we signed an MOU with the KMKNO, which is an office that represents all 13 um, Mi'kmaq communities in Nova Scotia uh, to work toward a mutual benefits agreement. It's really an amendment of agree an agreement that we signed with the Assembly in 2019 and we expect to have that concluded uh, in the next, uh, the next quarter. Uh, we've also signed a cooperation agreement with the Eskasoni First Nation and Eskasoni is the largest Mi'kmaq community in Nova Scotia uh, and we're finalizing two MOUs with the two more Mi'kmaq communities and the idea is to, to bring the communities in uh, in the spirit of economic reconciliation in Canada to, for uh, jobs, uh, training, and, and capacity building. So those relationships are very important to us. As, in terms of labor unions, we signed um, Nova Scotia's first project labor agreement in 2019. Uh, and we're currently in the process of modifying that agreement to reflect our movement away from fossil fuels and, and the movement to green hydrogen and green ammonia. We're currently negotiating that project uh, uh, amendment to the project labor agreement, and we're looking forward to concluding it to ensure that we've got labor stability throughout the life, the construction life of the project. Uh, in as far as the local community is concerned, we've had uh, multiple open houses in the communities, um, initially for the terminal itself as to support the, per the permitting process, but more recently, um, multiple open houses to support the uh, environmental assessment process for our Webster's Corner wind farm. And we expect we'll do the same for Forest Hill, 
uh, as we push that project forward as well as with our solar and with our salt cover and storage opportunity. Um, the local environment, Bearhead is very pro uh, pro proactive in providing project updates to all the municipal councils in the Strait region and the staff of the town of Port Hawkesbury, Richmond County and Guysborough County, our host communities. And to date, all councils are supportive of the Bearhead project and we look, we, we look forward to working with them in the future. For, for a guy who struggled with uh, grade 12 physics, it's, it's interesting to be giving a summary of, uh, of our, our progress on engineering, but we completed, as I said, pre-feed in, in December of 2023, and uh, we'll leverage those key learnings as we push forward with our RFP for feed, which should be going out this quarter. Um, in uh, second half 23, we engaged a company called IO Consulting, which is a joint venture between Baker Hughes and McDermott. Uh, and they partnered with At Atkins Re uh, Realis, uh, formerly known as SNC Lavalin, to perform a split scope uh, pre feed uh, for Bearhead. We've received the pre feed package and we've pre prepared the invitation to bid uh, for the package ahead of, uh, uh, of feed. The uh, pre feed key deliverables, of course, were the optimization of uh, hydrogen and, and ammonia, uh, plot plans, and substation layout. The, the strategy for modular, modularization and constructability. Uh, they've also completed or um, extended our, our acute quantitative risk assessment and, and uh, incorporated uh, uh, codes and standards, provided us with a class four cost estimate and, and level two project schedule, um, feed and the scope of work and ITB uh, and our RFP package have been prepared and, and I'm just awaiting board approval to uh, issue the RFP. But I think the key pre-feed learnings that uh, we gathered uh, as far as the modular aspect of the project is that uh, modular design is most suitable for construction in Nova Scotia, and this reduces the capex and provides more schedule certainty during construction. Uh, for technology selection, we seem to be, we're leaning more toward uh, PEM technology as the preferred electro electrolyzer technology because of its ability to quickly ramp up and down to match the renewable energy production from our two wind farms. For ammonia turndown, design optim uh, was optimized to allow for ammonia turndown, minimizing the requirement for hydrogen storage. So with that, I'll turn the mic over to my colleague at, uh, at Everwind, but uh, we are, are in a booth at the uh, Canadian Pavilion, and if you have questions, uh, especially on uptake uh, on the Bearhead project, I'm more than happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you very much for your attention and appreciate your time.